Hi guys, it's Sarah the Northwood Stitcher. This is the Prairie Schooler Edition. I have been running around the craft room trying to find some of the stragglers that are in either different bins to be whips or to be kitted up. I found 13 stragglers. So we'll go through those 13 first and then we'll figure out how we're gonna do the big book. So these are all Prairie Schoolers. I don't know how long this is gonna take try to go somewhat fast just as I dump some beads from a bowl all over the table. Uh, yeah. But um, it was as I ex uh, suspected, I have lots of prairie schoolers rolling around in this craft room that I have great intentions and haven't started to do yet. <laughs> so. These ones that are loose right now are the ones that I think I have shown in previous videos that I've been meaning to kit up and I've been trying to match some fabrics with. So the first one is book number 178 and this is the bunnies. And I have shown this and I know that some of you guys went out and got it. I'm going to do this on, I put the fabric away. It's a light purple and a light blue that I have. And this is all because a friend of mine did it on a light blue and I just went, oh, yeah, okay, I have to do that. This is Bunnies by the Prairie Schooler. 178. That's such a cute one. I'm not going to put the ones that I found running around in the craft room away because that means I want to do these sooner rather than later. This is book number 153, Welcome Spring. I just love some of those. Again, I don't think I'm going to do these on a dark fabric. I'll have to do some, pull some fabrics and see what I have. I want to make sure the colors pop. So this little bunny that's on the top is also a graph on the back. That's really cute. I like the ducks and the sheep. I hope I'm not going too fast, but it's got a pig, it's got bunnies, it's got a sheep, a rooster, a barn, a house, a hen with some chicks. Very cute. And of course, this is what started me down the rabbit hole. The acorn, excuse me, acorns. This is book number 65. So we all know why that's pulled out. Last video, I showed you the felt that I got to do the acorn tops. I'm excited about this one. And it's got the pattern on the back to give me an idea. I don't know what account they stitched these on. I have to look, sorry guys. You can do it on anything you want, of course, but let's see. This was done on a 32 count and it's stitched over two threads. So that's, uh, those are just gonna be such a great size to have out in my dough bowl. My dough bowl, I should say, came from my great grandparents farm in Truro. So I'm really excited that I have that. I don't think I've ever used it except for a decoration, but it was my grandmother's side and uh, I actually know where the farm was. This might be a working copy because I don't know. I know I have this kitted up somewhere. This is called Weather Wise 145 and it might be hard to see from a distance. But it says, red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky at morning, sailor take warning. And I really wanna get that one done for you know who. I think he'd like that. And the other thing on the barn or the house below is, a sun shiny shower won't last half an hour. That was 145, weather-wise. This is number 148, a Christmas visit. I just, you know how I am with Santas, a Christmas visit. I really like how they finish these too. Awfully cute. That's such a nice one. I don't know if I did this one. 
I don't think so. This is Holiday Harvest, book number 37. I did a similar one with berries that's downstairs. And I don't think it was a prairie schooler. It might have been. But this is is so lovely. I really like the uh, the pattern of uh, the different fruits in here. And that was book number 37, Holiday Harvest. This is book number 13, A Prairie Year. Look at all the ideas in this one. I love the turkey in this one. I was going to do that. And that, of course, the Santa and the pumpkin. And that is a prairie year. Of course, those shamrocks are really cool. Oh, this is going to be so bad because I'm just going to make a big pile of oh, today. I have to start today. This is book number 87. This is Christmas Trees number two. I really would like to do these and use some of my spools, which I seem to have plenty of. It would be a great way to finish them. Just use a little dowel. I could even use a real stick too. That would be cool. But look at that deer. So that's Christmas Trees number two, book number 87. I wonder if I have that color green. This is just going to send me down the hole. Book number 62 is Chris Kringle with K's. Again, they had me at Santa's. Chris Kringle. What great pillows and ornament shapes. Or even doing them, doing them, Doing the, these all in a row would be nice as well. One of the Santas, the blue Santa, has a cardinal on his hand. The other has a robin on his hand. The other one's holding a goose. Ugh, oh, lovely. Book number 73 is Christmas Samplers 2. This is quite the collection. I have to do all of them. And it's not a bad idea just to pull all the colors, get all the fabric ready, put it in one of my zippered cases, and just start working on it. Christmas samplers, too. Look at this one up close. Isn't that great? And this one. And this. And oh boy. Birds and berries, number 44. Aren't they gorgeous? So we've got a cardinal, we've got a blue jay, we've got a red-winged blackbird, and we have a chickadee. <sighs> Birds and berries, that was number 44. <gasps> what? It's a duplicate. Didn't see that. Sorry for the zipper. Ooh, lights are flashing. We have no high winds yet, so I don't know why the lights are flashing. Okay, we're all right. Book number 96, Woodland Santas. Lights are still flickering. Book number 96, Woodland Santas. I have this in a zippered case with the fabric. I don't think I've pulled the floss, but I need to. in a barnwood frame. And then in the same zippered pouch, I have Christmas Eve, book number 158. Do 
just lovely. Christmas Eve. I have, what do I have in here? I have picked out a 16 count oatmeal, just probably for um, Woodland Santas. And then for the Christmas Eve, it looks like I've picked out, ooh, that's this beauty. This to me looks like a Lugana or an even weave. It's, it's a no name, but it feels like butter. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, so that is the pile of 13 runaways. And those are the only ones that I found that I went surface searching for. I have not gone into multiple buckets to look for the other ones. I think what I'm gonna do is now we're in the binder. I'm going to open up the binder and try to go through them one at a time. So this is, wow. This is a 1984 Santa. And then a 1989 Santa. And I know I did this one. This is one of my first ones ever. And I put it in a little frame that was available at that stitch shop. And the poor frame is all dinged up, it's so old. This is a 1990 Santa. And then a 1991. Those are really nice. Then I have a 96 Santa. And a 1998 Santa, 1999, and a It's fun to collect these Santas. And I really want to do some of these. I have a great frame that I got from Goodwill that has four panels in it. It's supposed to look like a window. And I think there's either a little shelf or um, almost like a tray at the base of this. And my goal is to sit down and figure out on what count fabric I need to stitch four Santas on and have them looking at each other in each panel to fit that perfectly. Here's a 2004. That says Merry Christmas. And here is a 2008. Then I have the 2010. Two thousand eleven, and it just occurred to me that I haven't put my newest one in here because I got the what I call the Ozempic Santa for this year. Here is two thousand thirteen. And 2014, 2015. Do I have any color copies of these? No, nope, those are my working copies. Oh, those are the ones I just showed. Okay, here is 2020. Two 
2021. Here is, I don't have a date on these. I'm not gonna struggle with that. Here is the bear and the bees. And then the 1995 Prairie Fairy. I did her on top of one of my basket purses. Then I have Home for Christmas Designer Series. Home for Christmas. And then on the other side, the designer series Trick or Treat. Look at that owl. And this is a collection of Santas from 1992 to 1995. I think I did that. Oh, the sunflower for a friend. And then the other side is the Santa collection from 1984 to 1987. What I love about these charts is that they're black and white because I put them on my copier and I can enlarge the copy that I'm making so I can go in there easily with my highlighter and highlight as I go. This is book number 14, Holiday Homestead. This is book number 18, The Three Pigs. This is book number 20, St. Nicholas. I'm not gonna get tired of stitching Santas. I'm sorry, it's just, my house is full of Santa stuff. These are awfully cute. Put it back in there, Sarah. Book number 24 is Prairie Birds. Aren't those wonderful for spring? I would put these out probably in March and leave them out until June or July. Wow, oh, this one's really cool. I don't know how I got this one. <clears throat> this is an examination copy. This is called book number 34, New World Sampler. It's fantastic. It's awfully thick. Their cup one. Oh no, I have my copies in there that I'm going to highlight. Book number 38 is Prairie Lodge. I'd like to find sticks that straight. Those are really cute. Look at the beaver. <laughs> what year was that? No idea. Next one is book 47, Santa Rides. How cool is that?
I do love that train. Then we've got book number 49, Garden Verses. I've done this one, this one here. That's up at our camp. How doth the little busy bee improve each shining hour and gather honey all the day from every opening flower. Is it honey? Yeah, gather honey. I like to tease my husband. When we sit down at the dining room table, I can see it. And I always say something like, oh, honey, guess what? Or, oh, are you ready? And he'll go, uh, yeah, what? And I'll quote it to him. The middle one says, sunlight fades, stars appear, garden fairies gather here. And then there's a little sampler underneath. These are just sweet. And this is garden verses. He who plants kindness gathers love is in this one. They're timeless, absolutely timeless. Those were done in 1995. Then we have autumn sampler. Oh, I have to do these. Wind is rising and the air is wild with leaves. This one. Autumn Sampler. And Clear Moon, Frost Soon. That's the middle one. Yep, last one just says Thanksgiving. Beautiful. Book number 86 is Home for Christmas. Book number 90, nine, 90, nine zero is spring and fall. Another great turkey. Book number 93 is harvest time. I've been wanting to do this for an awfully long time. I think I would do the top one and the bottom one. I have enough Halloween to last me, so I don't need the witch one. But just lovely. That's a great turkey. Number 103 is Black Work Angels. You can do them in any color you want. Red, blue... Book number 110 is Santa and Friends. Oh, I can pick out so many. Book number 114 is The Needle's Eye. So the top one says, the needle's eye is wide enough for two friends, from me to you. The bottom one says the same, and then you have initials. Book number 117 is Prairie Stars. It's a cute finish with the felt. Cut the felt in the back. And I'm pretty sure you could do all of these on a perforated plastic and just do a full coverage on the plastic. Number 119 is called Stockings. And there is a, um, a pattern or an outline for doing 
the stockings on the back, which is fantastic. Number one, 133 is Winter Wind. I haven't done this one. Book 135 is Good St. Nick. Book 136 is Spring Has Come. I did that one for my mom. The long one. Was it that one? Maybe it was a different one. Now I'm not recognizing it. It might have been a different spring sampler, come to think of it. Prairie Schooler, but a different one. This is book 144, The Farmer's Almanac. This pattern's on the back. Book 145 is Weatherwise. Here's the, the other one was a working copy. We just showed that one. So now I need to mark that other one. So Red Sky at Night, Sailor's Delight. Book number 148 is When Witches Go Riding. And then on the back, I have Knock Knock. Then I have Double Double. It looks like I have a working copy in here with a whole bunch of 310. Hmm, might have been in there for a while. Then I've got book number 150. Oh, here's an empty sleeve, so I don't know what that's from. Book number 150 is called December. This is the one I did. I did the long one. That's December. And then in the back pocket, I have a Santa's House, which is a 2010 limited. That would be really pretty on some colored fabric. Then I showed you guys a lot. Boo to you. This is 156. I did all those ornaments for my tree. My Halloween tree. Boo to you. 157 is called Holly Days. Book number 160 is called February. That's really cool. More bunnies. Signs of Spring is book 163. Book number 164 is October. Oh, I need to do this one too. October. Break those up into six little pillows. That would be fun to do. Book number 168 is May. Book 
May brings flocks of pretty lambs skipping by their fleecy dams. That's really cute. <sighs> Book number 170 is As the Crow Flies. Book number 172 is Christmas Favorites. They put out some of these on mini cards. And the tiny, tiny cards, I think they were what? The size of trading cards or playing cards. And they were at um, the cash register as you were checking out as a freebie thing. And they did an entire collection. Because I remember I got this one as a freebie. And that was fun to stitch up for little ornaments. They were so small. I can't remember what I stitched them on, but I mounted them to card fronts. You could take it off and it was, I already had the monofilament on it. So all you had to do is remove it from the card and hang it. That was a fun idea. This is book 174, Cats, Bats, and Witches. I can't remember if I've done this one. Cats, bats, and witches. And on the back, I've got a bunch of littles. I'm trying to show them. So I've got who's theirs, who's there, and some minis. I did this one for my Halloween tree. I think I did this one as well. Then I have book 175, Santa's Night. He comes in the night while the white flakes around him whirl and finds the home of each good little boy and girl. That's magical. I love that. Then I have book 177. This is January. I've done this one. That was a lot of fun to stitch. January. This one I've been wanting to do. This is book 180, All Hallows' Eve. And on the back, can I, sh how do I show this? Are two other little charts that come with the, um, come on the back. And that's All Hallows Eve, book 180. Then I've got book 182, Reindeer Roundup. And again, they did something similar on the back with Reindeer Roundup. Those are the bonus charts that are on the back of this chart. Which are just like close-ups of the front. Such a cute chart. Book number 188 is Trick or Treat. <gasps> yes. What's going on in the back of this? So those are the bonus charts on the back or inside this. And then I've got tucked in here, night flight. That's a lot of fence. 
but it's really cool. Then I've got book 189, Boo Moon. Did I do some of these? I don't think so. I have to do some of them. Boo Moon. Book 190 is Happy Christmas. Book 196 is Nevermore. I was reading House of Usher a couple of months ago, so I like that. I should probably stitch that up. Oh, this one's cool. This is book 197, Hocus Pocus. I love the owl. This one I want to do. Ooh. And on the back of this pocket, I've got Miss Fortune. Almost done, guys. This will probably be one of my lower watched least watch videos. It's just Prairie Schooler. But if you love Prairie Schooler like I do, I like to see people's collections to see what I'm missing. And I should just sit down and go through the numbers and try to look up the numbers in between because I would like to get all, all of Prairie Schooler. This is book number 198, Christmas Tree Farm. I have to, have to do this one, Christmas Tree Farm. Then I've got book 199, The Night Before Christmas. The Night Before Christmas. Book 200 is Witching Hour. Book 202, last one, 202 is Evergreen. And I don't think you can see this one so well. This one's on the back. It's a deer butt looking over his shoulder. These would make Adorable ornaments, but I do love this and that sampler format. And that's book 200, Evergreen. So, I have um, enough to stitch, right? <laughs> this is not a big collection, you guys. I'm, I should make my friend Spools do a video. What do you say? She's got way more, way more than I do. And it was thrilling when I, I met some, I met a friend of hers who said, oh, I know this girl who has all of them. And I said, what? Somebody has more than I do? And that's how I met Spools. So I said, I've got to meet this person. This is quite the binder. And I think this is probably a, it might be a three inch binder. And it's, um, it's hurting. Oh, so that was Prairie Schooler story, story time. I think I did really well. I did not show you all the other stuff that I want to show you. So I'll just make another video for that. Stay tuned. 
Thanks for stopping by and I hope you got some great ideas of picking up some prairie schoolers and where to find them. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Etsy. You can find them just by Google searching prairie schooler. Some of your needle workshops will carry some prairie schoolers. So keep your eyes open and just go on the hunt and have fun. Happy crafting. Have a great day and you guys be safe. Bye.